Kill man lost to kill man Ian. Come in. We see Robin now, he's on the, the, the green bin, so we've got to just stop flash of lightning. Yeah, that was a massive flash again, right above the top of you. Over. At the moment, on the mountain, there is some lightning and thunder, and the mountain rescue have asked us to hold everybody here. So the guys on the top are concerned, so we're going to go hold for a short period. So we're here for a couple of days, pre-race. There's a lot to do, particularly because of the scale of the event and the geography. You know, course marking for the bike course takes literally all day. Morning. The athletes do not see what we do behind the scenes. They have absolutely no idea of the oiling of the machine. Um, and that's good, because we don't want them to know about that. We want them to know that they're safe that they're going to be able to find their way through the course, that everything's provided for them where it needs to be provided. Uh, and they don't have to think about that. They have to think about getting through the day in the race. It's always all in control. And as you can see, everyone is autonomous. <laughs> There's no barking orders <laughs> until John turns up. <laughs> Folk turn up and think this happens by magic. It just appears and all the signs are in place and no one thinks about how that happens. This is one of our um, more infamous slogans that we use for Kelpman. If you get lost, you're a moron. It's an old joke for us, but every year there's a new audience. <laughs> We're a pretty kind of well-oiled machine these days. This is year 11. So we kind of know what we're doing and people just kind of slot into their role. You know, the team that come, doesn't really change a great deal. There's a lot of stored knowledge, uh, which just makes life a bit easier. I have. I've not, I've not been in the sun this year. <laughs> we're trying to establish if he needs a small or a medium. It's way too hot for us. We can't cope with this heat. We're just, we'll just be ready, <laughs> but the, what, the heat is just crazy. Uh, but we're on it. Paul and I have now worked together for 10 years, so I know him very well. There's generally very little bickering goes on, so it's, it's a good relationship. He's not as funny as he thinks he is. His dress sense is absolutely horrendous, um, but he's, he's, a, he's, he's a solid piece of the Kelpman wall, without a doubt, and, and we couldn't do this without him. Okay, I think that's me ready to go. I mean, actually, we couldn't do it without any of our team. It's, uh, I don't know who the cement is, but <laughs> we have lots of bricks. <laughs> As race director, I'm kind of responsible for the stuff between the start line and the finish line. It's not necessarily particularly interesting, but it's all the essential stuff that has to happen in order for there to be a you know, field of play. Kelvin's been really important to me. It's been incredibly satisfying and exciting to kind of see it happen. More than anything else, it's been about people. You know, I've got mates around the world who I would never have met because of this crazy race. Everyone's kind of very serious about the race. Well, most people are very serious about the race for good reasons. You know, it's a pretty tough day out. This is a little bit of an opportunity for the tables to be turned a bit. It's just relaxed. People get to get together and chat. Although we do get the brigade that kind of, you know, I don't want to get my wetsuit wet. Well, you know, <laughs> clues in the name.
I've never known conditions like this and I've been coming here for, you know, by the time we've done the recce, this is, this is 12 years now and I've never seen it like this. The Keltman was conceived uh, by myself and, and uh, let, me, let me try that again. <laughs> That's true, but it'll upset everyone. So, <laughs> I mean, it was, you know, an idea formed, you know, I, I was kind of there and, I, you know, maybe, maybe I was at the forefront of that. But, but really, the, at the end of the day, it was probably my idea. I mean, there's all sorts of lackeys around about me taking uh, credit for this, but actually, it came out of here. <laughs> We've done a back-to-basics triathlon. There's no flowers, there's no big fancy carpets. Uh, it's turn up with your kit, do the race, really enjoy it, and have a great experience. The type of adventure and excitement that this event offers did not exist. We launched it on a Facebook page before we'd even wrecked the courses. It was obviously captivating for people and it was an immediate success. So then we had to create an event. <laughs> What they have to do first of all is bring their kit to registration. The runner and the support runner have to bring the safety kit that's mandatory for the mountain and we check that inside out. They're not allowed past the kit check to registration until that's done. If they don't pass it they're sent away to go and correct it and often that might mean a drive to Inverness which is an hour and a half away. I think we've got everything. All good? All good. That's what I like to hear. All good. Our core team is nine people so that's kind of the, the the staff, but then we have 45 crew. Um, so we have a difference between staff, crew and volunteers. So we have 45 crew who will be given one of these, so they'll become an official crew member. They'll be put onto the mountain as mountain uh, safety aides. They'll be put onto the transition areas to run the timing checks. They have all sorts of important jobs. And then on top of that, we have another 40 odd volunteers who tend to come from the local community. Um, and they'll help us with, with catering and logistics and car parking and all that kind of stuff as well. So, uh, so, so the, the number of people involved is, is north of 80. My wife did this uh, brilliant event back in 2018. It was her 60th birthday and it was, it was her second triathlon and she thoroughly enjoyed it and we just feel it's time to put something back into the race so we volunteered for this weekend. I think this is an incredible event, yeah. I think I, I started running just to lose weight and then this was something that you saw on the television and thought that is beyond my wildest dreams, I'll never ever do it. And then just over the years you push the boundaries and then I did it. And it's apart from my two boys, it's my best achievement ever. It's fab, I just loved it. So special. Another happy customer. <laughs> but the crew, to me, mean everything. We've got people who've been here since year one with us. They just want to be part of it. It's great when we've got that level of just commitment to the race. This whole place feels like home for a lot of people. And people do say that I'm in my second home when they arrive. I've been part of the Keltman family since 2014, so uh, I keep coming back either as, uh, as racing or as crew. It's one thing to be part of the races as an athlete. I think it's also very important to, to give back, and I think it's an important lesson to, to be part of the crew every once in a while as well. So you understand how much work and how much hard is actually put into making these events. It's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, they're phenomenal people, 
but it just isn't possible, you know, to do it without without those incredible people. And so that crew is absolutely at the centre of the community. There's a crew community, there's an athlete community, there's a residence community, and they all come together in one big Keltman community as well. We don't set a target for the type of competitors that, that we want to have here. Um, everybody is welcome and they do come from all sorts of places. They come all sorts of, all sorts of backgrounds, all sorts of countries. Hello. Such a mix of abilities as well. I mean, our, our fastest time is 11-ish hours and our slowest time is 23 hours. All welcome. We need people to be self-sufficient and adventurous and enjoy the experience. They're not going to have red carpets, they're not going to have changing tents. They're, they're going to have very few facilities. This is back to basics triathlon. Hey, how are you? Right. Sorry, let's go together. How are you? There are a lot of people that are making through the swim. Good yeah. yeah. so, luck everyone, enjoy it. So we're a wee bit behind schedule because the, uh, we had a new bus company and, um, well, I don't want to be nasty about anyone. <laughs> there was a little bit of extra manoeuvring required this morning to make sure everybody got their cars parked. It's pretty special, I mean, yes. <laughs> of course it's like this every year um, and actually sometimes it teases us down here uh, because uh, it's calm in the morning. <clears throat> Stuart has uh, switched on. He's eating those branding. He knows uh, events now. He's brand obsessed. I mean, he just kind of makes my life a misery. You know, if it's not kind of, you know, if it's not branded, it's not been done properly. And he's, he's just all over that all of the time. And we have kind of quite, quite frequent little spats. I think we're quite, we're both a little bit fiery, if I'm honest. Stuart is a, a time bomb ready to explode. He has to, every year we have some explosions for something. When we clash, it's usually usually down to John's micromanagement because uh, I don't like that. I don't. So generally I end up shouting at him at some point during the weekend. It's definitely a brotherly argument. You know, there's no, there's no animosity for more than three or four minutes afterwards, so it's, <laughs> it's quite safe. Um, and then Paul and I very rarely clash, but when we do it's because he's a belligerent bastard. <laughs>
three, two, one, go! What amazes me is that some people are so determined that even though they're going quite slowly and they'll be in the water a long time, they just make it. The success of this event is completely intangible. It's so much to do with, with what we are given by Mother Nature, because it's all of the factors that come together with the community, the small number of athletes, bringing their support teams and their families with them. So it's, it's a lot to do with the organization because we make it fun and solid and safe for them, but really the environment is what makes the experience. They actually stop. This is all about atmosphere and it's about feel and it's about being in this location. Oh, it's all soggy. And it's about being in and being part of this community and the people that live here welcoming us. And when that happens, that's what success looks like for me. When we've got happy athletes, happy supporters and happy local residents, then we've, we've done something right. So this is Ross down here, and the timing on this is, yeah, that, that's a recent ping. 
um, and then a bit of a pack developing behind Paul further along the road. First woman here, Claire Weller and Kaya Bergwitz Larson, pretty much riding together, it looks like. So one, one of the things I do during the day is keep an eye on the trackers operationally. I can see that this one, we haven't had any data for hour and 17. Um, so if I select it and then just do restart and send that command, the system sends it a text message telling it to restart itself. Yeah, we've had a, a little incident this morning. So one of our support crews phoned in um, to say that they'd broken down. Thankfully, at the same time, another team um, pulled out and they were actually quite close by. And so we've been able to redirect another team who thought their day was ending. They've now become the support team for a different rider. That, that kind of team spirit, that kind of camaraderie and that helping each other out is, is really typical of this race. It's great to see, I love it. Just kind of heading up past this bit here, down into a little bit of a gully, and then with the path snakes round. That's going to be the first marshal point where I'll be standing, and then take a right up onto the ridge, and then we're heading up to the second trig point. Hi, John. Ian and Neil here. If you can hear us, we're up at our um, our marker on the ridge. Space for the van, please. Oh my God. Okay. Don't forget to, to let, let me take my GPS and my phone, please. Yeah, sure. You can just put them in my bag. Yeah. Great, thanks. Um, uh, your GPS. Thank you so much, Max, for being amazing. That's okay. We're going. Born That's ready. fine. All right, see you later. Mm, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Later. You've only got 18k to go and then you can blow up as catastrophically as you like, alright? <laughs> Hold it together. Okay. Good job, you guys. End of the race, just think of the end of the race, okay? Yeah. Okay. Right, okay? Okay, go. Cool. There you go.
extreme triathlon is not just run in the mill triathlon. It's not rock up, get the badge. I mean, it's being there, it's part of it. It's, it becomes part of the human being, I think. Well done, guys. Well done. This is when it gets busy. This next hour is when it goes mad. Uh, people chasing, chasing for the, the cut off. This is when it happens. Uh, so we need to be on the ball right now. So if you can just find your waterproof chest and a compass. Responsibility for me is to make sure we have a crew to start with. Uh, so Hannah and myself work uh, over the winter uh, pulling together the crew. John's responsibility is, is um, crew management, uh, which Hannah does for him, and then he takes the credit for it. And then uh, mountain safety checkpoint. So that really is his job, is to run the mountain safety checkpoint, which is where we do a kit check and a medical check before they're sent up the mountain. So now, uh, Leslie, Leslie two, two zero seven. Yeah, okay, enjoy. Right, John. I've been involved in triathlon for thirty odd years. Uh, I've been involved in all kinds of different triathlon, uh, having been a competitor when I was younger, and then kind of grew into being a bit of an organizer. I had the opportunity to do some really cool events, uh, and this is one of them. Remember, um, enjoy it. Are we allowed to set off? Have we done the two minutes? Yeah, yeah. 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 Triathlon in general is a sport for everybody uh, and it's, that, that's what I think and that's why I believe I've enjoyed it as my sport uh, and my career. Are we ready, Mim? Yes, off you go. Are you sure? Absolutely. Dance sure. partners tomorrow, sure. get up the hill. <laughs> You're not meant to flirt and do the job at the same time. Well, I bet. <laughs> I'm married, for goodness sakes, and it's the only chance I get. <laughs> Don't film that. <laughs> Yeah, that was a massive flash again, right above okay. the top of you. Yeah. Over. Good that, that was the dibber. I just saw the reflection of it behind me. I'll just, I'll do that. You keep an eye on the comms. At the moment, on the mountain, there is some lightning and thunder, and the mountain rescue have asked us to hold everybody here. It looks like it's going to push through. But the guys on the top are concerned, so we're going to go hold for a short period. So we, we'll work on that. You, you, work, you work for a stop for 10 minutes. I'll keep talking to these guys and I'll, I'll keep them moving them across the ridge, I think, for the moment. You can hear the thunder. We don't really want you on the, the top of the mountain. Did everybody hear me? Yeah, we will fix the time at the end. Yeah, but it's a 10 minute stop for everybody. It's actually 11 minutes now, so we're going to go on now. Yeah, but be sensible, be careful, and don't get in each other's way, please. The verdict though? Uh, we're gonna call it. Call it? Yeah. So any more runners coming through we have to send them down. There are two teams that are through already if you let them dib and then come back and we're not gonna let anyone else through. So for safety concerns the mountain rescue guys have asked us to not allow anyone after this point to go up. So you are the first people who are not going up after yeah. But you'll still get a blue t-shirt because you're here before the cut off. So we're not going on the mountain. Uh, unfortunately, there's lightning on the mountain, so you don't really want to be the lightning striker. We're still blue t-shirt, and you're still going to do it, but no local. It's always a disappointment, and it's a disappointment for me to have to tell people, but uh, that's part of the gig, I suppose. And the, we work closely with the guys from Mountain Rescue, and they, they help us, and they gave us the right advice, and we have to follow it. From T2A, you've got the most spectacular ridge run anywhere.
it is a ridiculous run course, particularly the kind of the blue t-shirt, the high level route. I mean, the low level white t-shirt route is no slouch either. I mean, that's a, it's a kind of a boggy, rocky, twisty mess in the back of there. Lovely. Not a typical the Scottish weather, I must say, yeah. but nevertheless very pleasant. I hadn't really realised how important this race is to people. People in tears because of what they'd achieved. You see that right the way through the field from first to you know, final finisher, is that it really means something to people. You know, it's not just another race. It's, it's, it's much more important than that. It's just a cool thing when you see somebody coming in, no matter how fast or slow they're going, it's just a, they're there, they've made it, they've done their day. Yeah, that to me is what it's all about. We have a policy that there will always be a director on the finish line. And for the last finisher, normally all three of us are there. So it's quite a nice thing to do. Yeah, we do that because if you're a competitor and you've come here and perhaps you've spent nine months preparing and you've spent a lot of money to get here and it's been a huge enterprise, you've involved your family, you've divorced your wife, you know, you've, you've eventually got here, uh, or your husband, sorry. <laughs> Let's say it's not just men, men who compete. Um, if you get to the finish line and it's an anticlimax, then what was the point? So we make sure that, that one of us must stay on the finish line at all times so that we welcome the athletes home. Superb. Did you get that? <laughs> Cheers. They've spent so much effort getting there. And it's not the day that has made the effort, it's all the other stuff. The sacrifices of getting up at stupid o'clock in the morning to go for a swim and cycling hundreds of miles over a weekend. So what happens in the day is the icing on the cake. What I also find amazing is that 
even the slow ones at the finish line are still able to walk and talk. And you think that they've been out for 16, 17, 18 hours um, and they cross the finish line and they have a beer and they smile and, and they tell you it's amazing and, and, and it's incredible. I expect them to be lying on the floor unconscious, but, but they very occasionally are, <laughs> not very often. Don't know about that. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Thank well, you. We'll We've well. also, you know, as a result, I guess, of that importance and that significance, you know, we do get wedding proposals and all sorts. I think we've had four or five now, something like that, either up on the mountain or at the finish line. You know, that, that this, this stupid event is that significant in people's lives. That this is the moment they choose is mind blowing. You want a dipper? Yeah. yeah. Great job. Hey, well done. Thanks, buddy. Uh, I had a great swim, just to be clear. <laughs> just to be clear, I had a great swim. Everything else was a shit show. I want to thank you for being part of whatever's wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big part of that, all right? All right, let's go, I need soup. It's the feedback from these guys at the end. You, you see what it's like. Everyone comes up and says, thank you for putting this on. I mean, they're, they're burst, but they're, they're elated. <laughs> they're fucking midges. <laughs> cool. uh, we can leave it there. Yeah, yeah. Right there. Success to me is that people go away from here having experienced an amazing day. Whatever that weather, whatever it is that happens around it, we've helped make it happen. Uh, and we've helped those folk go away with an incredible experience of Scotland, an incredible experience of Torridon, and an incredible experience of Keltman. We, we do it for the experience for us, and I love it. And, and you know, if it was if it pays me £2.50, then great, that's fine. It doesn't matter. It, it's all about what we create for the experience. We know we've created a global brand now out of this, which is quite, um, what's the right word? It doesn't make you feel arrogant. It makes you feel proud is the word I'm looking for. Let's <laughs> get it right, yeah. This is f***ing brilliant. <laughs> And it's not just the athletes, it's their support crews, it's our crew, it's us, you know, it's the community, it's all those things, all having this shared purpose and the shared experience. And it is quite extreme. And in that kind of melting pot of extremeness, that experience is forged. One, two, three. And it's something that, you know, your colleagues in the office in mon on Monday morning just don't understand. But everybody here does. So there's that common experience, common understanding of having done something pretty special.